Uh, this uh, biodiversity of wild food and medicinal plant of Eastern Himalayas uh, was a topic panelized not by me, but my student uh, who were working as a PhD scholar last night. And uh, here I just would like to briefly just uh, highlight a few findings of uh, the, the research of what uh, we have been conducting since last five years as ethnobotanist. Uh, and at the same time, at the field level, uh, at the laboratory level, we have tried to validate those in the phytochemistry, the value addition of those food and medicinal plants which are available uh, mostly in the eastern Himalayan region. Uh, it's, we know that uh, those parts are very rich in biodiversity. And uh, we had another interest on that. Uh, uh, the food and medicinal plant have a lot of, you know, the compound which compound of very nutraceutical interest, you know. That, uh, but then just uh, for the production and, and just to garner some industrial scale production kind of things, uh, that kind of some, we need some kind of expert like a plant physiologist who really could understand you know, agro technology and then value addition cultivation so that those uh, uh, kind of secondary metabolite which we are looking for could be maybe improved because of this true stress induction or some kind of things. So with the help of this Mississippi State University, we were started working on that. Uh, the professor Reddy was enough to cooperate something on that line. And uh, just uh, since last uh, five or six months, we are working. To, but this is very a preliminary kind of talk that we are going to deliver. So uh, this region is very rich uh, in cultural and biological diversity. And uh, very unique in the sense the whole, the top 12 mega diversity hotspot. Then we have uh, the highlight here, uh, the two aspects, the ethnobotanical of, uh, aspect of some traditionally used food and medicinal plant. Number two, the apart from the traditional food and medicinal plant, it's just we have uh, some you know, biochemical studies on those. Then particularly the potentilla, the Bactinum glaucal album, Drymeria, Propin, Quaroja, Serica, Quercus gripiti, and Quercus semi, Carpifolia, those are widely used by those uh, local communities as, uh, as basically as a food, uh, but uh, those are somehow act as even a medicine maybe. So just uh, out of curiosity, we just uh, went on to find out. The, our basic target was to look for some antioxidant compound. Plants have thousands and thousands of compounds that we know. But uh, here our target is only very few compounds, maybe two or three compounds, especially the gallic acid, uh, the quercetin, and uh, the, we have the another compound called acetylcosides, which is found in different you know, plants, but uh, the most uh, predominant in uh, Central Asiatica. So let's see the, how we... So on ethnobotanical basis, we have... Uh, yeah, this this is the rich the this the study area we have conducted the whole the wheat is spot the highest rainfall region which we call the eastern Himalayas, uh, the state of Arunachal Pradesh, the Nepal and Bhutan, and the part of Assam. Those are the region that uh, the comprises the eastern Himalaya actually, and uh, the, we have. Uh, the work with uh, the local communities, particularly the Nisi of Arunachal Pradesh, that's the Donipolism is their cultural practices that we call but rich in traditional you know, knowledge uh, related to utilization of uh, especially the plant bioresources. Then um, with this uh, tribe that we could able to identify some kind of plant like a uh, total one at his seven species, mostly edible plant, that's the wild plant. So then now we have a number of medicinal plants out of the out of literature review, then we came to know that most of them are even a medicinal plant. It's very interesting then. So now the roots are even the most widely used plant and whole plant, something like this. Then let's go ahead with so, so, so a kind of uh, biomedical, ethno-biomedical studies, we call it, just a random pill survey. So here we could see that a lot of uh, the, uh, the species Especially, uh, we have like uh, the stomach-related disorders. This, the plant utility is very high, you know, this kind of. So those are the richness how the plant are widely used by the local communities as a medicine. And this is, now, out of those, uh, you know, several plant, we have uh, prioritized very few species. We have came down, screened down just to look for very few compounds, like our target, the antioxidant compound. 
So Patanchila, Bakshinum, Drymeria, those are very edible plant. It's all are edible. So this Central Asiatica is commonly used as a salad or vegetable. Now let's see how. So antioxidant compound, it's say already, it's widely debated since yesterday, yes. So uh, it's a compound that built the peat uh, pre radicals, you know. So our target antioxidant compound from traditional wild food and medicinal plant, the gallic acid, uh, the basically of penolic uh, uh, origin, and the known for anti-cancer, the anti-diabetic and anti-inflammatory activities. Then we have a quercetin, the flavonoid group of a compound, uh, which are widely found in all the plant. Probably in the onion group, it is the highest. Say quercetin, even this gallic acid. Those are widely found in most of the edible plant. But what about the wild plant, which we never know, and most of the tribal communities they use. So we can have that source of you know, things in addition. Like So this is how the inclusion. Now, this is just the chemistry of uh, gallic acid and quercetin. And uh, <coughs> so those are the plant uh, which we have selected. The first is, I think, uh, yes, uh, Drymeria. Then second one is Propinqua. Um, uh, yes, Propinqua. This is Propinqua, yeah. Uh, Potentilla. Then Roja Sirica. Uh, the Bexinum Gluca album. This is the berry, the wild berry, very sweet in nature. Mm -hmm. And the Quercus semicarpipolia and Quercus, uh, sorry, Griffiti and semicarpipolia. So this Quercus species, the fruits, they are mostly used by those Eastern Himalayan tribe as a famine food. It's mostly during food, when food stock is adjusted. So then that time, this uh, a corn is actually used as, a, you know, the food supplement. So this is very interesting. Then this is uh, used as a berry and it's just a commonly eaten, you know, wild berry. So then this uh, just led us to some sort of curiosity that the compound may be some interesting compound we made. Then we bought uh, some kind of, uh, uh, we started estimating this. So pinolic compound estimation. Then Potentilla is showing some kind of highest than uh, Quercus semicarpifolia. Then uh, just the flavonoid content, so even this Bexinum Gloco uh, album is showing very, you know, the remarkable the result. Then just, uh, just the DPPS assay of uh, the antioxidant pre radicals. So it's uh, especially this uh, Bexinum Gloco album is showing a very good, you know, the progressive result. So this gives us an indication that those plants can have the anti inflammatory and anti cancer activities. Yeah, just that may be consumed as a. So then uh, regression curves. So ABTS, so here we have, again, the Bexinum is something in you know, a very remarkable plant. So, and, and apart from that, we have a Quercus semicarpipolia. Then, uh, so after that, uh, what we have done is HPTLC quantitation of quercetin from Quercus by using the markers. Uh, and then uh, <coughs> those are the, the, just the standard digestion which we require is just to detect that. So these are the quercetin, uh, quercetin. This is the marker standard. And from, I think, Bixinum Gluco album, we have, you know, this kind of, yeah. So we have the range of uh, quercetin, yeah. This is, this is true HPTLC. Then, uh, yeah, this is another gallic acid from Rosa Serica, then, uh, the Quercus graffiti is all from gallic acid, yeah, the source of gallic acid. Then this is semicarpifolia, that's the peak of gallic acid, it's quite clear, and HPTLC, you know. Are, so now we can have the comparison views, like chromatographic st standard, and the fruit extract of Rosa Serica. So here, sorry, uh, uh, we have. Uh, a standard marker, and this is a sample track. So we have a gallic acid here, which is equivalent to your standard. Or just uh, it's indicated that something is there. So this is how the significance of this study is. And then, uh, then we have this another. There's a Quercus gripiti even. So again, this gallic acid is very much prominent. Uh, so in comparison to standard, so this is also indicating how remarkable it. So then is, this is very interesting, another gallic acid, pick, which is very much comparable to the standard. Yeah? So that means uh, those plants, especially the semicarpipolia, 
and other groups have a lot of a lot to say about antioxidant yeah so this is a kind of standardization especially when we talk of herbal drug so we have to somehow standardize that this compound the rf value this much is this so that in future if there is any kind of adulteration so we could easily detect it so this could play a big role in so now the proximate composition is also not bad especially the carbohydrate is very high in all you know plant that means it's a consumable so this is a, you know basically a kind of edible plant and uh, this is more, just the crude fiber is also good enough uh, then yes uh, mineral element so potassium the nitrogen the calcium is very much you know it's uh, maybe uh, within tolerable limit of a biological system and then the vitamin always is required in a very traces by the human biological system. We don't need actually a lot of vitamin in our body. What every vitamin, maybe A or B or C, actually we need in a very traces amount. So that's how it's. So we have a lot of, say, carotenoid. So mostly um, carotenoid, probably mostly the vitamin A. Then alpha tocopyrrole is mostly uh, vitamin E group, uh, which is a help in uh, cell membrane stabilization, and uh, it's a powerful antioxidant. So consider as, and at the same time, this ascorbic acid is also a very important vitamin. So uh, those are just the pound in traces, but uh, could cause a significant physiological, you know, changes in human physiology, and this is very important because vitamin often act as a hormone we call it. So that means uh, you don't need a very big amount when it is called hormone. So we need a very small amount so that it causes mark physiological changes. Now this is anti-nutritional factors. So it is very interesting to know that all the wild plant do have that kind of anti-nutritional factors. It is only because it is nature's build actually to be a defense mechanism for those plants, actually. The defense mechanism is essential for those, maybe the wild plant, from grazing by the animal or insect, you know, that is very important. So that kind of tannic acid, pitate, oxalate, saponin, those are actually a kind of uh, maybe, uh, you know, that for us, uh, from nutritional point of view, it could be anti-nutritional, but uh, traces amount is required in every plant. So it's, but there, and then, but we can say those are within tolerable limit of balance. But after necessary processing, those can be a consumable. So there has to be some, you know, technique, you know, developed technique to remove those uh, maybe tannic or pitot or oxalate uh, so that it become more consumable. You know, that kind of things can be done. And uh, this is just one of my students. He have conducted some pharmacological kind of activities. And uh, taking the paracetamol, this is uh, some kind of uh, uh, analgesic, I think, uh, drug. Just to see the, how this uh, elevated body temperature can be reduced by the plant extract, particularly uh, Bixinum glauco album. So uh, the result is very significant in the sense that, uh, so this is the standard. Uh, <clears throat> this is standard. Uh, this middle one is standard, the paracetamol drug. And those, uh, at least, uh, the plant extract, the blue and red, those are actually proximity. That means the walking, somehow, somehow walking. So this shows that the plant could have a anti-inflammatory or antipyretic activities. Antipyretic means something, you know, that uh, reduction of the body, elevated body temperature. So now in our key findings, what we have seen is that there is a presence of uh, antioxidant compounds such as quercetine, which are mostly of flavonoid origin, gallic acid, then carotenoid, ascorbic, alpha tocopherol, vitamin E, the mostly which are most widely predominantly found in those wild plants. And even those are mostly common in most of the cultivated wild fruits and vegetables that we consume daily. So proximate analysis also shows some kind of uh, nutritional you know, potential that plant do have, but we have some anti-nutritional you know, factors like tannin, pitot, and oxalate that could be you know, you know, and they, you know, made consumable after you know, necessary uh, uh, the processing, and that could be within our biological limit of toleration limit of biological system. And uh, here is what interesting. Just uh, I'm just sharing very brief, you know, the. Fruits of Bactrinum 
glauco album contain a flavonoid compound that is called quercetin as per our estimation which is much higher than teas red onion and apples so we have a 280 mg per kilogram of dry sample uh, just in case of bacinum, so in tea leaves it's uh, already known uh, internationally this standard is known and uh, red onion we have a 13.27 and apples we have 4.42 uh, you know the mg uh, you know of uh, per kilogram of uh, you know in apples so this is how this plant could be very useful in sense so then uh, <coughs> another compound is the gallic acid which are widely you know predominant uh, you know the compound that we have witnessed in Quercus and the Rosa Serica. And uh, the, in Quercus, we have uh, just uh, seen very, you know, lot good quantity. So then finally, we come down to our one of uh, very interesting, but this is ongoing, just I like, can very preliminary, very ongoing. And this is just a very visible result that our ongoing experience through. So we are looking for Asiatic side, which is, uh, uh, you know, the brain memory booster people called it in traditional Indian medical science. So a specialty of this Asiatico side is it's a pentacyclic triterpenoid saponin, the antioxidant agent for brain and neurosystem. So those are already reported in traditional you know, medicine like uh, Ayurveda. So cure dementia, Parkinson, and uh, there are lots of literature are there since compound has been you know, isolated and work has been extensively done. But uh, in terms of stress physiology and this, uh, you know, no work has been done yet. And in terms of agrotechnological development, but plants are widely consumed by the local communities, especially the Asiatic communities. So plants are quite common in South China, Africa, uh, India, it's Sri Lanka, very much common plant and widely used plant. But a specialty is that it is used, traditionally used as a brain tonic. So who do not like to become maybe the Einstein, Everybody curiosity is there. That so that's why uh, there has been a lot of you know interest over this plant. So at Mississippi we have tried this kind of experiment, which is quite visible. Uh, this is just the one month just observation we have kept on the greenhouse. So this is a control 100% water and 100% nitrogen plant is very healthy in one month and uh, <coughs> in drought stress situation, 50% water, 100% nitrogen, little sturdy. Uh, nitrogen is trace, 100% uh, water, but uh, it seems little healthy still. But drought and nitrogen is stress, just a little stress. So our just target is to have a lot of uh, studies out of this you know, experiment, especially from the leaf. Uh, we are going to you know, analyze the phytoconstituent, the increment or the decrease, maybe. So especially in the stressful situation, uh, it is uh, well assumed the fact that uh, secondary metabolite uh, production become much higher in stressed situation. It is all assumed. So now we are going to, in lab, we are going to see that how, you know, at what percentage the acetylcholine level has increased or decreased, or what new kind of compound could be, you know. You know, seen out of so just uh, this uh, morphological measurement, the root, uh, you know, growth measurement is just a normal experiment that we are going to do that. But at the same time, our primary target is to look at the asiatico side, the concentration, the incre increase, decreased at a particular hour of treatment or amount in that way, so that uh, we could develop a standard in that sense that. Uh, Asiatico side from this plant could be, you know, improved through better cultivation practices. It is WHO mandatory, you know, there is a guideline that good cultivation and good harvesting practices. There is. So for every species of a drug kind of a plant, we need to develop that kind of, uh, you know, standard, you know, experiment. So with that objective, just we're just moving. And it's a very preliminary experiment, I'm very sorry. So this is just another that, uh, that was uh, without UV. Now we are just giving some UVB stress here again in this group of plant. So again, we'll just try to look at the secondary metabolite, that whether the secondary metabolite is going to. So we are talking of the global warming and climate change and plus uh, that uh, the U depletion of the ozone layers that would uh, actually lead to 
lot penetration of UVB, this kind of radiation. The what about the vegetation, the secondary metabolite production, the, will there be any usefulness of that kind of radiation? Just, we are just out of curiosity looking at that angle, and this is very interesting. So this is just the preliminary kind of things, and we are just looking at that. So this is a very you know, healthy plant, uh, just 100% nitrogen and 100% water, uh, just a very healthy, happily growing plant, uh, the Asiatic. So now with this, uh, I think uh, just a very brief sharing, uh, nothing I have to. So thank you so much for your passion sharing. And I'm very much thankful to those, my PhD scholar and uh, my uh, the colleague, uh, Dr. Pallavi Kalita, who is from National Institute of Technology India for doing those biochemistry. And uh, Dr. B.J. Gogoi, DRL, you know, Ministry of Defense, Government of India for his uh, phytochemistry and other analytical work. And uh, Dr. Raja for supporting me in this physiological work and understanding how to build uh, phytochemistry and physiology together so that there is a holistic understanding of the situation. So genetic level studies, I could not find any you know partner yet. So maybe in future, I just try to look about how this uh, gene regulate uh, regulation uh, kind of things can be done in future. Those are just the scope that just the sharing kind of thing. So finally, I just uh, 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 that's my funding agency, the Ministry of uh, Defense, then the University Grant Commission, Government of India, for their uh, valuable support throughout uh, this uh, five years of study. So thank you very much. Any questions?